hopefully that's all working. I haven't got a red record. Yep. Beautiful. All right. So today we're joined by Lainey Bradley, who is a cognitive occupational therapist who has come to talk with Sarah and I about specialist memory services. So um, perhaps if we kick off by asking you some questions, Lainey. Um, Sarah, do you want to do you want to start or do you want me to start? I'll start. Okay. Um, Lainey, thanks so much for coming along. Could you just tell us in broad terms what the specialist um, memory service provides? What services do they provide? Um, yeah, sure. So specialist memory services is a diagnostic and management service for people with cognitive changes, including dementia, that we set up to provide a multidisciplinary assessment and management option for people. So we provide dementia diagnosis and then um, you know, any investigations required to um, achieve that and also post-diagnostic support um, as far as ongoing management from both a medical focus but also allied health. So as, as you said, I'm an OT. Um, we also have neuropsychology and nursing here. Um, so we aim to cover not just the medical management of of dementia but also the psychosocial and other aspects. Great okay thank you and uh, how and why did you and the team come up with the concept sort of what unmet needs did you hope to address when you were forming this new service? So I guess the team all have worked in public health um, over a number of years in dementia diagnosis and found one of the challenges is that post-diagnosis there's very limited option um, for ongoing management support. And that was quite um, frustrating for us as clinicians to be diagnosing people but not able to offer ongoing support. Um, and so we set this clinic up to uh, fill the gap that we saw for people, as I said, both medically, but also, you know, we know that medical um, treatment is limited um, mm. with many conditions. And so that it's, it's really managing supportive care and the, the non-medical aspects of the condition as well. So we, that's why we've set it up with a multidisciplinary approach. Right. Yeah, thank you. That's fabulous. Thanks. Um, and how do people find you? How do we refer people to your service, Lainey? So for a medical assessment requires a medical referral, usually from a GP. Um, you'll find us online. We've got a website, specialistmemoryservices.com.au, and there are several links and contacts there, but we accept um, facts and there's, you know, online referral options as well. Great. And what type of needs would you typically um, sort of be presented with or what requests do you commonly have from the clients that you service or the patients that you support? So we do get a lot of referrals from GPs wanting a diagnostic assessment um, for people at all stages, really, very early through to people with quite moderate impairments. Um, we get some referrals from other specialists wanting second opinion or further expertise in, you know, um, complex presentations. And then we also do get referrals just for, for example, for the allied health or neuropsychology aspects of the service to the point really where well, for OT, actually, I'm almost at capacity, really. It's been, you know, there's obviously a great lack of service of cognitive OT and dementia-specific OT in this area. So um, that has been quite a popular stream as well. And I, I see people with young-onset dementia through their NDIS packages. So that's been keeping me quite busy as well. And I get referrals from support coordinators, usually for that type of work. Okay. Thank you. Sounds really busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, we all, all three of us work um, in different capacities with people living with dementia. How can we work together? What kind of suggestions do you have to ensure that our consumers are better supported uh, post-diagnosis? I guess, you know, for services like ours, it's important to know what avenues for the ongoing support such as your services there are and how to tap into them. I feel as though I guess I'm quite aware of it, but, you know, I guess establishing links and networks to um, ease referrals both directions, really. And I, I, I know we have done that, haven't we, um, in the past. Um, I, you know, I think maybe working together to 
work on any gaps that we see as providers as well, because we know mm -hmm. that there are still lots of um, limits to what's available for people. Mm. Absolutely. And so what um, sort of approximate fees would clients or patients be um, prepared to pay when accessing the specialist memory services supports? So it is a private service, so there is an out-of-pocket fee. The exact cost depends on various factors, including which specialist the person's seeing and whether they have access to any funding. For example, as I said, I do see people through NDIS. I also see people privately. So what we encourage people to do is inquire about the fee at the time of um, the referral or of making an appointment and we can um, send them specific information then. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. One other question, Lainey, because this video obviously goes to across Australia there are a lot of people who watch these videos what area um, does your service cover we actually accept referrals if people are willing to travel to us we've had people from interstate um, you know and all of you know what well, we're based in Box Hill North so eastern Melbourne but we get people from all over Melbourne all over Victoria and interstate referrals as well obviously demonstrating the gap that exists <laughs> yes um, and obviously providing ongoing management support can be a bit limited when people have travelled so far, but we do what we can. We do do telehealth, um, you know, we sort of help people however we can, but I guess our main catchment area is the suburbs of Melbourne. For my OT specific thing, uh, work, I have had to limit it a bit just because there's a lot of home-based um, interventions and supports and travelling so far was limiting how many people I could see. So I uh, am accepting referrals on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but again, the neuro, our neuropsychologist, Rob, would, would again see people who can travel to the clinic quite happily from, from different geographical locations. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. And do you Fantastic. know... Rob, Sorry, um, Lainey, I was just wondering if you um, are able to provide us with rough waiting times currently for new referrals to your service. Do you have an idea at the minute? It's a couple of months, I think, at the moment. Yeah, we're trying to keep it contained, but we are blowing out a little bit because we've had so many referrals, but probably, mm. on, you know, somewhere around eight weeks, I guess. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And I think um, I remember when we had the session and you presented to our broader group at the Dementia Knowledge Network, a couple of questions came up around the actual appointment time. Are you able to give us a little bit of an idea of how typically when a new patient or client comes to the clinic, how the, the sort of assessment process operates? Yeah, sure. So it's a multidisciplinary assessment, as I said, even at the point of the diagnostic um, appointment. So it's a joint assessment with myself and either our neurologist or geriatrician. Mm -hmm. um, and we ask people to allow two hours and we generally do take almost that long. However, there is opportunity for a brief um, break in between, um, you know, for a, a quick drink or while we sort of compare notes and um, collaborate uh, between ourselves and then bring the patient and their loved one back in uh, for, for the initial feedback. Um, there's opportunity for the patient and loved one to speak separately if necessary. And there is some um, a lot of information gathering, but also some cognitive screening and a physical evaluation that's done in the appointment. Mm, great. Okay, thank you. Sarah, is there anything else that sprung to your mind? No, it hasn't. Not at the moment. It sounds like... Um, there's a huge gap for a service like this with your wait lists and waiting times. Yeah. Um, and people travelling from all over Australia to see see you at the clinic is, is astounding. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, look, um, you know, we just want to be able to offer people ongoing support, not just diagnose and discharge, which many, many clinics, unfortunately, are forced to do because of the way they're funded. Mm. Yeah, yeah, very frustrating, isn't it? I wonder, Lainey, if anybody who is watching this recording has further questions, is there a way that they can get in touch with you or learn more about the service? I know you gave us the website a little yes. bit earlier. Yeah, so the website does have quite a bit of detailed information on it. We try to make it quite informative for people. So have a look there. Otherwise, you could just call the service um, on our general number, which is 03 7036 1521. 
um, and speak to our receptionist who might be able to answer any general inquiries or I'm always happy for calls to be put through to me if I can help at all as well. Um, okay. You'll see on the website our general inquiry email as well, which is just reception at specialistmemoryservices.com.au. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, Sarah, is there anything that you think our broader audience might want to know at this point or I feel like it's a pretty good summary? I think it's a really good summary. Um, right. Thank you for the contact details and I'll put them on a little so they flash yeah. up. Yeah, lovely. Lainey, is there anything else that you want to put forward or we haven't touched on in regards to the service? I guess really it's still a developmental phase for us. We're quite new and so we are looking to see, you know, over time what else we might offer. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, hoping to continue to fill gaps that are, are, are present in this area. So we don't run any groups or anything like that at the moment, but that over time might be something we've identified might be good to do. And as as I guess the three of us know, we are um, liaising about more broad, you know, big picture stuff that as a group we might be able to do as well. So we're happy to be involved in any initiatives um, along those lines too. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you yeah. very much. Really appreciate your time yes, again. Thank you. Pleasure. Um, thank you, Lainey. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot.